Hello, this is Sheng Yuan from Sun Yat-sen University. Honored to have the chance to do this presentation on this special occasion. The topic of our paper is ECHO-FL, Adaptive Federated Learning with Efficient Age Collaborative Pipeline Training. As you know, federated learning is an emerging learning paradigm that is able to exploit the distributed computing resources from multiple clients for training a mutual deep neural network model. Specifically, in federated learning, each client uses its own data and available IoT computing resources to learn the model parameters, while a central server aggregates updated parameters to train the global model and periodically synchronize with clients. With the joint efforts of outstanding researchers around the world, recent years have witnessed the rapid development of federated learning applying on and improving our real world. However, applying federated learning system in real age scenario like smart home still suffers from many challenges. IoT devices in age scenarios such as smartphones or serving robots are usually considered as resource constrained entities with limited computation power memory capacity and communication bandwidth. Therefore, under the extremely computation intensive and resource demanding nature of DNN training, how to perform and further accelerate DNN training on resource constrained IoT devices is one of the key challenges. Existing works have utilized model compression techniques such as pruning and quantization to reduce the computing and memory overhead for IoT devices. However, these methods are all modifying the network architecture or model parameters, which may defect the model test accuracy as well as FL training convergence. Also, human experts need to optimize specifically for a particular model and not easy scalable. Alternatively, we observe that in typical age scenario like smart home, there are usually a number of trust devices in physical proximity that can share their idle resource with the participating client in federated learning. This therefore motivates us to take advantage of computing resource across age devices to accelerate local training of clients in federated learning. We name it age collaboration to reduce age collaborative DNN training into federated learning system, several issues need to be addressed. Firstly, how to efficiently collaborate the distributed computing resource on the age to perform DNN training is the most significant issue. The second one is the dynamics nature of age device. IoT device in age deployment like smart home usually accomplish high variation in available resources heavily depending on the usage habit and purpose of their users. Thirdly, in particular deployment, the available trust devices that each smart home can collaborate with usually varied, inducing issues of system heterogeneity in federated learning. To leverage distributed computing resources, existing work usually apply data parity However, while data parity and act well for powerful accelerator cluster in cloud data center, it can fall short in edge computing environments, where edge devices are typically loosely coupled with wireless connection. As we will show later in evaluation section, the transmission overhead can occupy nearly 66% in data parity and even perform worse in throughput metrics than single device training. Moreover, Data parallelism requires devices to hold a complete model, which is expensive for memory constrained IoT devices. Pipeline parallelism can efficiently hide the transmission overhead by overlapping communication with forward and backward computation and boosting training throughput. In our work, we propose ECHOFL, a novel edge collaborative pipeline based federated learning framework. This illustration depicts an overview of the proposed ECHO-FL framework in smart home scenario. On server side, 
ECOFL adopts a grouping-based hierarchical architecture to conquer the issue of system heterogeneity. On client side, ECOFL exploits trust and idle edge devices and leverage a resource-efficient paradigm of edge collaborative parison training. We further employ adaptive scheduling methods on both server and client side to adjust the dynamic issue in IoT environment. And we will introduce our ECOFL framework start from the client side. The process of pipeline training can be divided into four steps. At first, we will need to partition our DNN workload into stages and assign each age stage to a dedicated device. Then, maximize the throughput of pipeline training. We will split a mini batch into several smaller micro batch and in inject them concurrently into pipeline to perform forward and backward calculation. At last, we will synchronously wait for the finish of all micro batch and update the stage model. However, traditional pipeline parison strategy usually start backward paths only after finishing all forward paths. Activations produced by forward tasks have to be kept for all micro batches until backward paths begin, which is memory unfriendly for IoT devices. Actually, the activations produced by forward paths will not be used again after at the execution of corresponding backward paths finished. Motivated by this insight, ECOFL pipeline schedule one forward path followed by one backward path strictly, which can release memory produced by forward paths early for memory resource be used. To perform, to perform pipeline training, a crucial step is to divide the DNN model layers into multiple stages. As we know, the global throughput of a pipeline model is greatly determined by the execution time of the slowest stages namely lagger. The lagger will starve other faster stages and result in resource un underutilization. Therefore, to partition the model into separate balanced stages, we design a heterogeneity-aware workload partitioning algorithm with two steps. In profiling step, ECOFL pipeline profiler will monitor the computation time across forward paths and backward paths on heterogeneous IoT devices. During devices profiling, profiler will simultaneously collect the layer message of DNN model, such as the size of input activations and model parameters. The next step is workload partitioning step. We leverage the idea of dynamic programming and develop an optimized algorithm to support heterogeneity IoT environments by evenly distributing the DNN workload based on the computation capacity of heterogeneity devices. In a sense, we can easily find that the pipeline training speed greatly determined by idle time on each devices, namely idle bubbles. Therefore, to maximize the throughput of the global pipeline, we want to minimize the idle bubbles of each stage. We divide the idle bubbles in the synchronous pipeline into two types as shown in illustration. We name the first type of bubble as synchronous static bubble, SSB in short. This type of bubbles is caused by the periodic pipeline flush, which is inevitable in synchronous strategy. But we can reduce the proportion of the time SSB occupies by increasing the number of micro batches injected in the pipeline concurrently. We name the second type of bubble as data dependence bubble. DDB in short. DDB is caused by the data dependency of micro batches in pipeline. For example, as shown in illustration, DDB1 is caused since micro batch 2 do not pass from stage 1 to stage 2 in time. We further analyze how to avoid the DDB from appearing in the pipeline training process. We empirically observe that the occurrence of DDB is determined by the number of forward paths before one forward, one backward process in each stage. We name a startup phrase. As shown in illustration, if the number of forward paths of each stage in startup phrase too small, DDB will occur. 
but if too many forward paths reside concurrently in stage, will cause memory pressure to resource constrained IoT devices. In our work, we derive that when the number of forward paths of each stage in startup phase satisfies equation one, we can avoid the occurrence of DTB while minimizing memory pressure of each stage. Existing distributed training usually statically partition training workload among the tra training workers. However, this static partition approach is not suitable for the IoT environment because of two reasons. First, IoT devices usually have high variation in available computing capacity and memory resources. Second, the maximum throughput of the pipeline is greatly determined by the lagger, and fluctuation in the execution time of any stage will seriously affect the overall throughput of the pipeline. To solve the above problems, we adopt an adaptive workload migration strategy we will monitor the execution time of forward and backward time on each stage and adaptively reschedule the pipeline when fluctuation occurs. As shown in illustration, all devices will do workload migration concurrently according to the new scheduling configuration. And next, let's talk about the server side of our EcoFL framework. After obtaining the local models by each collaborative pipeline from each smart home. The remaining key issue is how to efficiently aggregate the local models in a faster manner. Existing, existing synchronous FL solutions can achieve a high training performance, but the slowest climb can significantly prolong the training time. Asynchronous FL manner elevates the striker issue, but it will sacrifice the global model accuracy and convergence speed. In IoT environment, the available trust devices that, it, that each smart home can collaborate with usually vary, which cause severe striker issue. EcoFL employs a hierarchical federated learning architecture, which combines the best of both mechanisms while efficiently elevates striker issue. Specifically, in EcoFL, we first group smart home with similar local training performance. Then a synchronous aggregation is applied to aggregate model updates from the clients within the same group. And next, an asynchronous aggregation is made for global model aggregation among different groups. In EcoFL, hierarchical federated learning process, both system and data heterogeneity will affect training performance. EcoFL adopts a heterogeneity-aware client grouping strategy, considering both response latency and data distribution to strike a balance between system and data heterogeneity. The grouping target is to let the response latency of the member in the same group be as close as possible while having an associate data distribution as close as possible to the IID distribution. As we mentioned before, the response latency of each client can be varying occasionally due to the changes in its collaborative device resources or the network condition in IoT environment, which will disable the this static grouping method. We designed an adaptive client regrouping mechanism. EcoFL server will monitor each client in runtime and dynamically regroup client according to their real-time response latency. We evaluate the federated learning and pipeline modules in EcoFL, and here are their respectively experimental settings. First, let's talk about federated learning performance, as shown in Fig1. EcoFL hierarchical architecture outperforms the baseline with faster convergence and higher achieved accuracy. Fig1 also witnessed that EcoFL with adaptive scheduler can still maintain a high performance under IoT environment with dynamic nature. We also analyzed our heterogeneity-aware client grouping algorithm. FAT80 groups clients only based on response latency, and astronaut 
groups client only based on data distribution. Fig2 witnessed that EcoFL heterogeneity aware grouping method outperform both FAT80 and Astronia. We next evaluate the local training performance of EcoFL pipeline. We compare our novel pipeline parison design with single device and traditional data parison. The result demonstrate that the low speed links between IoT devices translate data parison's frequent gradient synchronization to prolonged idle waiting time, while pipeline parison can hide the transmission overhead by overlapping the computation and communication process. When the number of model parameters are huge, the throughput of data parison may be slower than training on a single device. At last, we evaluate our adaptive pipeline reschedule and workload migration model with a three-stage pipeline on EfficientNet, as shown in illustration. We applied an external GPU workload to device two at the pipeline on the efficient on the 100th timestamp. Without pipeline rescheduling and workload migration, after applying external workload, the training speed of device two will significantly slow down and become lagger in the pipeline. With our adaptive pipeline scheduler, device two will migrate part of model layers to device one and three to rebalance the workload across each stage. By doing so, the pipeline can be promoted to a closer throughput level comparing to that before the external load spike. Here comes to a conclusion. First, we devised a novel edge collaborative pipeline parison as a key mechanism to achieve edge resource pooling over trust devices in proximity for local FL model training acceleration. Second, we propose EcoFL, a hierarchical FL framework upon the edge collaborative pipeline training. A novel grouping-based hierarchical aggregation mechanism is designed that jointly consider both response latency and data distribution divergence. Third, we featured adaptive scheduling in both FL server and client side to tackle system dynamic inherent in each scenario. Four, we implement EcoFL and conduct extensive evaluations in both realistic testbed and large scale simulations. Experiment, experimental results show that EcoFL can upgrade the training accuracy by up to 26%, reduce the local training time by up to 61%, and improve the local training throughput by up to 2.6 times against the state of the art baseline. And that's all. Thank you.